Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you wherever you are in the world. I am Tigris Osborne. I am the chair of the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance, also known as NAFA, and welcome to the NAFA webinar series. Our guest today is Anna Chapman, who I will um, introduce you to in just a second. Before we bring Anna on, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Pro Bono ASL. Today we have Selena and Lavender providing interpreting for us. And uh, you can learn more about Pro Bono ASL and the important accessibility work that they do at probonoasl.com. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, NAFA has been working towards equality at every size by way of education, advocacy, and support for fat people um, and anyone who is fat positive and supportive of fat community. Um, we have been doing that uh, since 1969. And to learn more about us, you can follow us on your favorite social media at NAFA Official, N-A-A-F-A -A -A Official, or visit our website at NAAFA.org. Um, I am joining you today in this virtual space from Phoenix, which is Autumn Land. I want to say to everyone who is watching us today that we are in the process of considering the practice of land acknowledgments. We like to acknowledge the uh, indigenous folks of the physical spaces where we are coming into this virtual space from, but we've also um, we've also learned that there is some debate in indigenous communities about whether land acknowledgments are helpful or performative or harmful, and so. So as we continue to debate that, um, we do continue to encourage you to know whose land you're on. That answer is just a Google away. Um, and I will tell you that I'm coming here from the Phoenix area, which is Autumn land, and we're going to continue to dialogue around that issue. So if you have feedback for us about that, please reach out to us through uh, our NAFA website and share your insights on that. Um, with no further ado, well, happy Fat Liberation Month. I should have started with that. August is Fat Liberation Month. We are celebrating all forms of community work and fat joy and political work that are part of the movement for fat liberation and fat rights. You can learn more about that, again, on our socials or our website. There's a Fat Liberation Month hub on our website, which will also show you the other activities we have coming up this month. And across our social media platforms, we're doing lots of education around what fat liberation means to us and what it means to all of you. So thank you for all the ways that you have... Um, um, shared those things so far, please use the hashtag Fat Liberation Month to share more about what this movement um, and the quest for equity and equality means to you for fat people. Okay, so now with no further ado, I want to introduce you to our special guest today, Anna Chapman. Anna is a self-care icon a fat self-care icon, a joyful movement instructor, size inclusion specialist, meditation facilitator, and fat activist. Having worked in wellness space for over 10 years, both in her own practice and supporting clients, community members, and other facilitators, Anna's work is care-centered and rooted in body liberation. You can find out more about Anna's work at I am Anna Chapman on Instagram or visit I am Anna Chapman Dot com. Anna, welcome to the NAFA webinar series. Yay, thanks for having me. It's so great. Um, my name is Anna Chapman. My pronouns are she and they. Uh, it's really great to be here. I'm going to give a land acknowledgement as well, and I love to hear updates as y'all um, figure out like what is the, the best for these sorts of presentations and people to feel really honored. And so I'm on uh, Portland metro area, which rests on traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Clackamas, Bands of the Chinook, Tualatin, Malala, and then there's many other tribes that were along the Columbia River. So really honored to be here um, on this land that is not ours. <laughs> so uh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're, so we got a lot of excitement about um, folks who are very excited to see you come here and talk about fat self-care. Before we get into some of your practical tips about fat self-care, let's talk about why you started doing this work. You know, you're, you're, I first encountered you on social media as more of a fashion uh, presentation. And how did you move from, um, well, how does fashion fit in with what you're doing now? And how did you move the needle further to the self-care side and why? 
Yeah, I love this question. So I started um, really just being playful with social media and, and I think fat visibility, fat vanity, like showing people we're out here and we exist is really important. And then as I started um, doing more of this work, I started getting into really interesting conversations with my fat community where I noticed like we were kind of like sharing different tips and tricks and and things around hygiene around travel around just many other things outside of just fashion that I thought were really important and so then um also being in the wellness space and not seeing anyone fat in that space and realizing like how connected the wellness space is to like capitalism and, and diet culture and like how there is yet another space where we are not invited. Um, and I thought that that was not, I was not interested in that. And so my content really started to change um, as I realized we'd need more and the experience of being fat is so much more dimensional and multi multifaceted than getting our bodies into clothes, even though that part is really important. I think fat fashion is very political because, um, as we've seen with these small indie brands, it's not hard or impossible to make super fat and infinite fat fashion, but it is really difficult, um, to challenge internalized fat phobia within the fashion industry and for people to really acknowledge that I think they go hand in hand. So it was like, I still love fashion. That is part of my fast self-care. It's part of my liberation. It's how I found um, that I could really express myself in whatever way I wanted. And so that part was really like, Oh, I'm never not doing that. But then once I got into questions around, people started asking me questions around like wiping and um, bathing and how we get in our nooks and crannies. And I was like, yeah, how do we do that? Cause I've been Googling it mm -hmm. and like, why are we talking about it? So I just started sharing things that I was running into every day that I was like, did you know this? Cause I'm just learning this. <laughs> it's so wonderful when we can get those kinds of tips and do that kind of resource sharing in, in fat friendly spaces. You know, I'll, I'll give a, a shout out to our beloved um, Dr. Kat Pase, who we lost earlier this year. Um, but just like a giant in, in fat studies and fat rights and who always started her podcast by saying I'm Kat Pase and this is a fat friendly space and how valuable that is for self care tips. Because when you are just Googling, you're trying to Google something like how, how can I, I'm too fat to reach my feet. You're going to come up with all kinds of stuff that you don't want to know about on the internet, right? So you're going to talk about some of those things in just a little bit, some of those practical tips. Um, before you do that, I just want to um, also just note that we at NAFA often talk about how fashion is important as self-expression, but also is literally an access issue. You know, how it it affects people in employment, how it affects people in legal proceedings, how it affects people in educational settings to be able to have clothes that are considered appropriate for the spaces that they're in. Um, so we always want to highlight the importance of fashion, both in the self-expression ways and in the um, like rights and access kind of ways. Absolutely. I mean, coming to Portland, I still don't have a good raincoat and I have worked so hard to find the different brands and it's it's like for a lot of people, that means they don't go out in the winter. They don't go out in the fall. And, you know, especially if you live in a, a place where there's heavy snow, not having access to a winter coat is really problematic for being able to live your life. So right. for me, it's like fashion is fat self-care because if I don't have the tools to go out and live, I don't have what I need. Absolutely. And Anna's going to share some specific tools with us as we continue through the webinar today. If you're with us live, we encourage you in the chat to also, also share things that might be useful to you and we can read out some of those things. Um, 
we, uh, I, I will say that Anna's going to share some specific products. NAFA does not endorse any of these products necessarily, and Anna does not have official relationships with these products. So this really is like community based. Well, well, how do you get recommendations when you when you Google and you can't find the answer? Um, how else do you find answers? Um, this community is really the research hub that we always needed. That's the thing I found is so I started just Googling and you're going to get maybe one informative post to 500 fat phobic, like harmful posts. Like it's, it's really not, the internet is rigged against us, um, Mm -hmm. in just the way that things are tagged and shared. Um, and so it's, it was really hard because I would just have to try every product and then be like, what works on my skin? And then I started to be like, well, wait a minute. Like I have this very particular skin and, and, and every single person is going to have their own tools and tricks. And so I never wanted it to just be from my perspective. So I started just doing, instead of asking me anything, I'd be like, what do you want to learn about? Or what do you want to share about? And people this community is beautiful because everybody wants everyone to thrive is what I found. And so I'm getting, I'm getting tips. If I ask a question about a specific thing, like I think recently I asked about when the upper portion of your butt crack splits slightly and you get kind of rashy, like, what do you do there? And people were giving such great information, things that doctors had told them, naturopaths had told them that they discovered on their own, that they learned from, you know, having babies with diaper rashes, all of these different ways and and tools for people to manage this one thing that's actually really common for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful because I was curious because someone had asked me, what do you do for this? And it wasn't something I've experienced more than maybe a handful of times. So I didn't have um, a bunch of tools for it. And so I was able to ask this fat community that is so rooted in care, especially on Instagram, the folks that follow me are, are amazing. And so they just gave me everything they recommended. And I like to kind of give it of a buffet to everyone. Like, here's all the information. I'm not going to skip go. I'm not going to keep any of it you get all of it Mm -hmm. Um, and you try what works because I don't know your specific skin, your specific sensitivity. And, and it's also important for me that everyone feels empowered in their self-care that it is ultimately what you know about you will guide you to the best tools and solutions. So instead of I'm the fat self-care person. You need to listen to me. I'm like, here's everything you could possibly do for this condition or this state. And tell me how it works and tell me what doesn't work. Because I don't want to be sharing things that aren't helping people or that are harming people. So you really are a conduit for community information. And is Instagram the place where you do the most interaction? Or where else do you gather that information? So Instagram and I have a huge network of just individuals I can reach out to. Like a, like my phone tree, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um And then I'm not afraid to, you know, reach out to someone or ask about an experience they've had because there is this community bond in the experience of being fat and having either a longing to be in fat liberated community or being in that community to where people want to share. So it's been really cool to see the information gathering happens on Instagram. It happens on just word of mouth. Um, and now I'm starting to get people just sending me things that they're like, you should check this out or like out of the blue, which is really exciting. And so what I'm currently working on, I haven't even really talked about this on men's. This is a hot VIP moment. Exclusive, exclusive Exclusive. audience is that I'm currently working on a fat self-care hub website where, um, all of that information is going to be kind of tracked by the different categories of like fat travel fat sex fat body care joyful movement everything with the fat lens and a fat sort of holding of how we live great abundant beautiful lives so that my dearest hope in this world is that it's dropping in September but I'm I'm doing it all myself so it's 
it's a beast of a project to do. That is a big project. Will we just find that on your your existing website when it comes out, or will there be a whole announcement? There will be an announcement. This is like the soft announcement, y'all. This is the so- This is the pre-announcement. It, it it's going to be fatselfcare.com. That's already happening. So, I I'm sure I will blast it on my um, space, and I'll even send y'all a DM so you can put it in the NAFA stories because I think it's going to be. Um, a really great place. And there's going to be also in every category a place where you can just share your tip that you want to invest in the community. And that is a great way for um, us to keep building this library. And so the, the site and the content will be free. And then there'll be um, a membership space where we're doing like some joyful movement classes. There will be um, community conversations where people just get to kind of come to a zoom like this and talk about the experience of being fat and being community. So that's all coming down the road. That sounds really fantastic, Anna. Um, so let's give a little then hint of what kind of things people might find there when that opens up. Um, I know you brought some specific things that you wanted to to share and I'm, I'm curious to know um, what do you get asked about the most is there sort of a trend about which topics you get at you mentioned nooks and crannies and we know folks are often embarrassed to talk about those things so when they find somebody who's openly talking about them that's super powerful um what else makes the list like sometimes we think of self-care as being like well you know instagram self-care sort of sometimes looks like i got a latte and a pedicure and that's how yeah. I, but you're talking about uh, that but also what else yeah, so that's all there. There's like, you know, where you get a good pedicure, where you get a, a good lot, like those kinds of things. The day-to-day treats that we show up for ourselves are very nice. But the things that I find are most helpful for folks and are most exciting is some of the more embarrassing questions. So like um, when you are using new toilets, like how, like get, getting wiping, how to do that in a way that is, um, humane and, and you can do it by yourself. Um, although I have been a person who has needed support there, so I would never want to say that it is something that we don't sometimes need support on. Right. So, um, some so I'm just gonna start showing stuff because it will connect. But the the things that I think are most um the ones we're scared to talk about are the ones that change our lives and make us um make life more enjoyable because we're not so I think a lot of the things that people ask me about cause a lot of anxiety. One of the mm-hmm. biggest is around like flying. So For anyone who doesn't know, if you fly on Southwest Airlines, they have a great customer of size policy. So you can go early. You just buy one ticket. You can go. I always go two hours early because I have that kind of anxiety. And you can go to the front desk and just say, hi, I need an extra seat for the customer of size policy. Oftentimes they will look at you and start generating it because they know that this policy exists for us. Um, But I know a lot of people don't know that and then they're not going to fly. So the beauty of this is you'll get, if there is an extra seat on the flight, which I have never been in a situation where there hasn't been, but one time they will give you an extra seat free of charge. And how it works is they'll basically give you an extra reserve boarding pass that you would put on the seat next to you. You get to pre-board. And that happens even if they don't have an extra seat for you because of this policy, you get to pre-board. And then my tip is get as close to the front as you can so that you're the first on, you can get comfortable and you're the first off. Um, But even with policies like this, people get really nervous. And so it's like, how early do I need to arrive? What do I need to know? And sometimes it's just about talking through the whole process that makes folks feel cared for and supported. And sometimes it's, you got to know all the loopholes because 
if you arrive a little late, there's not an extra seat. You're not going to have that kind of support that you need. Another thing you can do is you can just buy two seats if you have that kind of financial access. I often don't, so I can't. But if you did, they would refund it for you. So it's like people ask things like that. People ask about what's a good home bidet option. Um, There's all kinds of different ones now that we have. I think I use a tushy. There's a ton of them. So like I'll list whatever the great ones are. For me, it's about how easy is it to put install into the bathroom. I have a friend who will not travel without their travel seat bidet. And if they're staying longer than a day, they're installing that for the weekend, uninstalling it, bringing it with them. And that's like, yeah, that's some work, but you're not going to have any issues when you get there because you've put brought your own support right Anna what what is a bidet not everybody knows what that is oh sorry my bad okay so a bidet is a magical invention created by I think Europeans I don't know I think it was made by wizards but it is a uh, traditionally it's its own toilet type unit and it is basically a wasp a wash basin for your your booty so you turn a knob and it has like a little hose that will wash your um butt and surrounding areas and then a it's really much nicer on your system because you're not just like aggressively wiping with toilet tissue and b it gets a more clean feel because you can sit there for a minute and just like till you feel really supported. Um, So traditionally they're like its own side unit, but now we have a ton of bidet attachments that sit on your toilet seat and you can control on the side. There's even fancy ones where you can, it's heated. I don't have that kind of, (laughs) I'm very like, I just need a bidet. That's it. I just need that water access and I'm good. But like, there's a lot of, really a lot of options available yeah 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 there's uh, there's another there's also a kind that you can install in your on your home toilet that's almost like it's like a little hand like just like having a hand shower head or a handheld um the thing that you use in in some kitchens to wash dishes and it just installs to the side and you can use that for cleanup as well so there's lots and they're just you can look at them yourself at you know places like lowe's or you know whatever your ace hardware or whatever your friendly neighborhood hardware place is um but they're also available to to order online and there are actually quite a few plus size reviews online um i'll give a shout out to crystal bougon who runs the um runs the events fatcommunity.com and also um has a youtube channel where she reviews fat friendly products and i know she has a tushy bidet review on there so you can just look on youtube and find and find that fat product reviews um yeah so there are lots of ways to to examine your bidet options, if that's a thing that you want to do. And I want to say one thing about this because, um, you know, a bidet, it like fits under your toilet seat. And sometimes there's a little bit of space. So you want to find like a more fat friendly one because it your seat's going to sit on top. And I'll tell you, I have broken one and I don't think it was a, I think it's just like living in this world, being fat. Sometimes we break shit and we break toilet seats, that kind of thing. I'll tell you right now, I've broken three. It just happens. So if something were to happen, I just want to remind you, it's not your fault. It's not, it's a, it's just not the, the best. Fault. Exactly. So don't be, even if you've had an experience where it didn't last forever, that's okay. Not everything does. Try it again. Well, and I also remember I, you know, talking to friends about their their bidet situations. I expressed the concern about breaking and and um, and toilet seat hinges, especially breaking, not the seat itself, but those plastic hinges. So I have seat with metal hinges, um, and you know, I was worried about the bidet attachment going over that. And somebody actually told me that with their particular model, it actually sort of reinforces the structure of the seat. So it actually has made their seat more stable for them. So, you know, it's, it's this is a little trial, trial and error sometimes, I think, because everybody's shape is different. Um, yeah. But there definitely are, you know, it's an option to explore. Absolutely. 
I think the thing most people care about is hygiene and how, because there's so much stigma associated with fat phobia where we there's a narrative that um, fat folks are smelly or they're not as hygienic. And I actually think that's like such total BS because um, because we all know some stanky thin people. We know them. And I feel like fat people because of this, which is like a trauma response, right? We are more aware and we're constantly trying to figure out better solutions for ourselves. I know people who shower so many times a day and it's it's really not necessary. And yet it's like, I just want to feel clean. And so the thing that I'm trying to find is products where we don't have to overdo it all the time because of weight stigma and that will really work well for us. Um, and one of them is people were always like, and I personally had this where I was like, my feet are always kind of dirty. And like, I don't like that. And yet it made me feel unsafe in the shower to like bend down and soap up my feet and then stand on them. Like, I was like, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. So I, um, this is a product I want to show. This is just like a random Amazon. I don't even know the brand, um, but it's a foot scrubber. So you put this, it has little stickies in the back. You just put it in the back of your shower and then you can put soap and then rub your feet or you can put it on your feet, but it is like such a great tool for, you You just never had like, and you can even stand in the shower and wash your feet. You don't even have to take a full shower if you have dirty feet or, cause I don't really like to wear shoes ever unless I have to, I grew up in Hawaii, like. I'm not doing it. So I have dirty feet. So I use this and now I don't think about it anymore. And it's like this little, I think it was like $12 or $8 changed my life in a way that now I just don't think about my feet. And if they feel dirty, I just go clean them. So that's one of the best tools. That device is the one that I saw Anna talking about on her um, Instagram (laughs) channel that made me say, okay, we got to get her on the webinar series to talk about more of this stuff. And I'll say too, if you can't stand and walk on that thing in your shower, um, a lot of people don't know that there are shower benches that are available up to at least 500 pound weight capacity. I've seen at least 500 pound weight capacity. Um, Folks might have some ideas about higher higher weight ones than that. Um, I just want to clarify something about the, the channel that I just mentioned on YouTube. YouTube. It is fat product review, review with no S. If you put fat, fat product reviews, you're going to get a bunch of like uh, weightlifter dudes talking about things that allegedly burn fat and stuff you don't necessarily want to be exposed to. So it's fat product review. And then Crystal also has a channel called fatcommunity.com where there are videos of something similar to the webinar series where she um, interviews folks in fat community to um, share resources and talk about their experiences. So um, thanks Crystal Bugon for all your hard work for fat community those are two resources we'll add to the add to the list um and i just want to highlight a couple things that have come up in the chat um first of all let's while we're on bidets and all of that stuff let's talk about um someone asked a question about how do you how do you reach all your parts when you are in a public bathroom or you know a bathroom you've never used before you know they, I'm going to quote them. They said, you know, how do you get to your butthole when you're in that? I, mean, I love it. Let's be real. That's let's what be, we're trying to get. Let's be real. Okay. So personally, the public bathroom is my arch nemesis. What I do is I wait for the um, accessible stall because the thing that I have found with, um, flexibility and getting back there is the wider you can spread your legs the further you can reach down so for me it's either getting enough space where I can do my best and then when I get home sometimes I have to sort of tidy up if the stall is too small it's just I do my best and it's not cute sometimes however if I'm in a foreign restroom like a full bathroom I will put my leg up and that gives me more access you usually have one side that's more flexible so you kind of have to find your side and this part's all about getting to know your body like 
Um, you're going to have to move your flesh around. Like it's just getting into whatever way you can get to it, which is very acrobatic and, and hard. So that's why I think the bidet is really nice. They have two products that one I've heard people love it. I really struggle with it, which is a travel bidet, which is basically like Tushy has one. There's a couple of different ones. It's like a water bottle and then a sprigate. I can barely get that thing in there to squeeze it out. So if you have that kind of space, try that. The other thing they offer on Amazon, there's other places, is a, a wand where you can put the toilet paper in. And that then you can kind of go down either direction. Um, and it's like giving yourself a stick, like more leverage, more. An extension. Exactly. An extension. That's it. Not a stick, an extension. Yeah. Yeah. So. It might be a stick. Someone someone mentioned in another session that I was in recently, like actually having a sort of using a sort of like um not kitchen scrubber, not like a kitchen spongy thing that's on a stick. And then, oh. you know, having their own methods that they use to sterilize that. Um and you know store it and whatever but for their home bathrooms you're probably not putting that in your purse and you know for the public bathroom but but maybe you are like you know we need to do the things that work for us and maybe you got a really big purse or backpack because you take the thing that you need um and that's uh, the thing is like a lot of this isn't always like there's one solution it's there's a ton of ways when we get creative to do all the things we need to do. It's around reminding yourself that the, the spaces that we inhabit are not built for us. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through extraneous me measures to be able to take care of our needs. And because of diet culture, we are blamed for this. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest load. So if you have to get creative, which we all do, I want to remind you that that is a a sign of our innovative nature and that we are badasses and not, oh, I have to use this thing. Like, how amazing that we are able to find solutions when we're literally given none. Right. That bodies are diverse and expansive, literally, <laughs> and that we have to be expansive in our thinking about it. I, I think, what do you hear from people? We're, we're going to get some of your comments in the chat about add additional tips here. But Anna, what do you hear from people about overcoming those sort of internalized voices about, I shouldn't need this. I shouldn't buy a butt wiping wand. I should get a smaller butt. That's my fault. I deserve to have an inchy butt until I can you know, get a, you know, don't need something extra because it's, it's my own fault for needing something extra. What do people tell you about that? Or what tips do you have for just sort of like turning off those internal voices so you can just get the stuff you need? So my favorite thing when I, cause I get this too, right? It's not just people coming to me. I, everybody with a body in this culture experiences those types of feelings um, and those types of fears or like, I'm not worth this or whatever. Right. So the thing that I come back to time and time again is who is profiting off of that idea. Mm. Cause okay. it's not anyone in my community who is, who is selling that idea to me and how much money are they making? And then I think about all of the billionaires and I realize no, I'm not going to participate in that um, because the thing that we are sold is that it is our fault and here's tens of thousands of products for you to be less of a problem here in this world when really it's all a selling tactic. So I like to pick apart the idea of, well, actually, this isn't mine to take on. Like some white guy is cashing in on this self-shame that I have. And instead, I would rather put my energy into people that are empowering me. And so I don't actually get a lot of people saying, I don't deserve this. I get a lot of people saying, wow, I thought I was the only one. And it's really nice to see someone else experiencing this. And now I have a little bit more courage to go try it myself. 
Nice. Um, so let's, uh, I just want to share a few things coming up in the chat. Um, first of all, yes, um, they do make shower chairs up to at least 650 pounds. Um, thank you, Bill, for that. Um, Bill Fabry is the owner of Ample Stuff, which provides some resources for, um, for fat friendly and fat accessible products. Um, there's a recommendation for a particular travel bidet, which I can't see the product name of. I'll go back to you on that. Um, okay, don't leave us hanging on the butt crack split situation you mentioned at the beginning. You talked about that, but you didn't tell us this. You, you mentioned a couple okay, of okay. rash treatments or whatever, but elaborate on that a little bit. Okay, so the biggest problem with that is it's a combination of movement. So when you're moving or doing whatever, your butt's moving, it's splitting, and um, uh, moisture. So the biggest thing is keeping it dry. So you just want to clean that area, keep it as dry as possible. And then people said diaper rash works really well. Some people said Aquaphor works really well. Just any kind of rash cream that's going to also kind of keep it protected from more moisture. I know some people who use coconut oil that way. It has some antiseptic qualities. Um, you know, these are similar tips to what you can use for um, uh, any kind of chafing or th some of the chub rub. Do you have other chub rub tips? Yeah, so there's a good... Um, I, I just recently heard about remedy soap that I haven't tried yet, but this is what I use. It's called Hiba cleanse and it's kind of like an antibacterial antifungal wash. So if I have anything that's kind of um, yeasty or more moist, like a butt crack, a, a between the thighs, like under in your boob. upper mm -hmm. under boob, this is something I'll wash with. And then I will use, Okay, now I'm going to share this product. It's by Dr. Bronner, which disclaimer, I don't know if they're problematic. They seem weird. They have some sort of uh, religious something on the label. I do not um, stand by them or really know anything about them, but I do love their soap because it's one of the most inexpensive soaps that you can get that's really um kind of I like their tea tree it has some healing stuff in there uh but I I'm it could be a problematic brand so I definitely am not here to say go stand Dr. Brunner I'm just this is another really accessible tool um if funds are you know the remedy soap looks a little more expensive this one is just their um their pure castle soap and it is tea tree flavor scented uh but what I like about the tea tree is it it has a dry... Yeah, not flavor. Please don't eat the soap, y'all. Sorry, my words. It is... <laughs> See, after did. Um, but it is... Uh, it has tea tree oil, and I find... I personally have hydrogen titus supertivo, which is like a, con a skin condition that acts as an autoimmune but isn't it's it's very interesting uh, but it creates these welts in the thigh area in the armpit area and so this is also really great for that and that's another condition a lot of fat folks have and then my favorite thing for chub rub is I know mega babe has their thigh rescue for me sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's hit or miss my favorite is this monostat chafing relief gel because it goes on it looks like a gel but it uh dries kind of like with a powder finish so it's a little silkier uh you may have to reapply it but I think you have to reapply any chub rub if you're kind of sweating <sighs> So a few more recommendations from the chat. There is definitely a shout, some shout outs for Mega Babe and their thigh rescue. Um, uh, Dr. Bonner's baby mild soap in particular. Um, there's a mention of a travel size wand for um, extension wand for using that you wrap toilet paper around and then it's easier to keep one in your bag, in your car, in whatever, because it's not the sort of full length ones that are meant to be used at home. Um, and the person okay. says, cannot recommend enough. It took a couple tries to find the right one, but that really works. Um, will these recommendations, will we have them listed somewhere? 
You know, we can the- definitely, yeah, we can pull them and um, maybe we can, Anna, we can um, team up on a couple of things and we'll make a list for our blog. I would love that. Can I share one other thing I just discovered literally this week that is blowing my mind? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm a single person. And have you ever tried putting on lotion or uh, sunscreen as a single person alone? It's hard to get the middle of your back. You just use a spatula. And they even have longer ones on Amazon. But I tried it the other day and it was amazing. Isn't that cool? That's really inventive. Um, And like a super, you know, easy, like dollar store or whatever your brand is where you are solution. Um, That's what I'm always trying to find is like, how do we, how do we do this on a budget? Not because just, but just, I just want our care to be accessible. That's all. So everything I try to have a couple of, levels so that we can all access it there um is a little bit of discussion about powders and using um powder pu- a powder puff to help um there is also some you know cautionary tale about powders and some of the problems that they can cause health wise so definitely uh, be thoughtful if you're choosing something like gold bond or johnson jo- johnson's baby powder or something like that um but oh, lots of folks yeah. do like gold bond friction defense in particular um i think i'm seeing all the comments i'm not sure if i've missed any questions so definitely folks if you have more questions for anna go ahead and put those in the chat too um Let's see. I say one about belly moisture under the belly. Can I talk about that? Yeah, please do talk about that. So um, this is something that I think uh, is happens a lot is we get moisture rashing under our belly folds. And so there's a few steps. So if so for preventative measures, what I do is um, I will use like uh, a deodorant. I know Loom is pretty nice for this kind of thing. So I always have a special, like more cream based deodorant for my folds. Um, but that will keep it kind of protected and, um, helps to not get the rashing. But if the rashing happens, um, my favorite method is to use the HIBA cleanse. And then I will um, wipe it down with witch hazel. And then I'll use a a talc-free medicated powder when I sleep. And usually by the next morning, at least 80% is down for me. So it's like, it's doing a lot of preventative. So having those things. And then another preventative measure is they have the the cotton kind of t-shirt pieces. They're like... um, a belly liner basically and you put it between your folds that's if you notice like even with the deodorant it's not really helping um and then you should get a set of those and then you can just be washing them and just replacing them I also will find nice cotton undies because my biggest fold is that like unfold exactly so then I'll even put my con undies between the fold as long as the elastic isn't too tight because that could be irritating so it's like work and if I'm at home I'm not afraid to just put my t-shirt between them folds while I'm like typing on the computer you know it's it's not always a specific thing sometimes it's just I'm a little bit extra moist today and putting a t-shirt there um, some more recommendations from the chat, um, just using uh, cornstarch or making sure if you do make that choice uh, about powders that you're using cor- cornstarch based ones, not talcum based ones, which can have asbestos in them. Um, uh, Pambras, bra liners and tummy liners. And of course, you know, um, uh, under boob sweat is for anyone with chest tissue, not just um, women and femmes with uh, what we call boobs. So that's a good tip for anyone. And it's usually all the tips that work there work in any of the creases, what I call my Dr. Zoidberg creases. If y'all know, um, from Futurama, Dr. Zoidberg, he's like a lobster creature and he has all these different, you know, different mo- movements of roles or whatever. Um, so 
wherever your wherever your skin touches skin, some of these tips about underbelly or under boob, um, or you know where your thighs meet, all of those things can be good for any of the places that that happens. Um, shout out here for panty drop elastic free undies for putting under your apron, and for those who don't know that terminology, apron is usually when you have sort of a hangy belly, so that instead of your belly sort of sitting up on its own, it hangs down a little bit and creates extra fold there. Um, and, um, you can make your own liners from cotton t-shirts, make sure they are all cotton and, um, and make sure that you are paying attention to the quality of the cotton. So there's a question about furniture. Do you have any recommendations for furniture with higher weight limits? Some folks in the chat had been discussing, um, being able to actually search by weight limit on sites like Wayfair. Um, what other... Um, but what about for people who want to try chairs in person? Um, any tips? So this is this is something that for me was I. It's annoying because a lot of the manufacturers have these lower weight limits than is actually true, but the brands don't want to be sued and we don't want to be harmed in the making. Right. So my favorite new furniture brand and they. um they are only based in Austin is Austin couch potatoes. Um, I found them through fat girl flow who had done, uh, some like a collaboration with them. And I'm really impressed. This that I'm on is a couch potato from Austin. Um, cause I had tried joy bird, do not absolutely not fat friendly very overpriced would not recommend um and honestly i haven't found the best fat furniture solutions yet it's more been one off so if you want to dm me about your favorite fat furniture i would love to share about it um austin couch potatoes is the best one i've found and they're uh they have really great warranty. And that's the other thing, get a couch that you can get a warranty on because, uh, it's really important because you don't know, we don't know. You don't know how many, you know, one time you invite all your fat friends and you all want to sit on the couch. We cannot know that that is going to be safe because these manufacturers, they're not doing it right. So that's, I would love more tips so you can send those to me and I'll share them out. We um we also know that we see lots of folks in fat community recommending big fig mattresses. Oh, um, that doesn't help with chairs, but mattresses for higher that are made for higher weight bodies. Uh, there's a shout out for Amish Crafted Furniture, which you can find on Facebook. That's literally the name Amish Crafted Furniture. Um, although I suppose any. Amish crafted furniture oh, pretty uh, sturdy. Probably made sturdily, even if not with particular attention to, um, to weight capacity. Flex steel has been mentioned here. Um, those are the furniture ones I see again, we'll collect these resources, um, and, um, and maybe do some crowdsourcing on our own social media to find some more suggestions and put them on our blog. Um, another question about sports bras, um, sports bra styles, without zippers or clasps that keep the boobs from touching or flopping down so that, you know, a sports bra style where you're not getting your boobs pressing against your chest. I mean, uh, the, I did help them with their resizing. Super Fit Hero is my favorite active wear brand because they go up to a true seven X. Um, and but it's the traditional, it will make you a uniboob kind of situation. Um, I don't like the clasps or the zippers. I know super, I think I would look into super fit hero. Um, I think turrets are okay, uh, but they only go up to six X and Lane Bryant's are mediocre I think there's a huge gap in the market for sports active like actual performance wear for fat people because they have not figured it out yet but super fit is amazing and we you know they were actually I I know I can vouch and tell you that we tested them on 
all bodies, different sizes of fat bodies. They're pretty compressive, which I find to be helpful when I'm moving, um, but they're not too aggressively compressive. What about products for itchy stretch marks? So that I would probably do um, a diaper rash cream. I would do um, a hydrocortisol or a like a um, an aquaphor, and I would do the same. I would also wash with an antifungal and do witch hazel. I feel like witch hazel is a very underrated uh, product that can literally heal so many things. I agree with that. And I think because it's labeled astringent and people think it's going to have that burny feeling that alcohol has, but it really um, often does not, you know, unless if, even if you have something that's a little open as bug bite or scratch or whatever, it's usually still pretty more of a cooling effect I find. Um, yeah. And it's usually, you know, cheap. Um, uh, Vaseline. Um, oh, great. That's a great option. And Vaseline comes in some, uh, Vaseline brand at least, comes in some cocoa butter Vaseline blend. So if you don't like that sort of petroleum jelly scent of Vaseline, you might find the cocoa butter one more pleasant. Um, We have just a few minutes left. So if there is a final question, please go ahead and pop that into the chat. Again, um, we're going to keep, we're going to gather this information and uh, see what else we can crowdsource um, uh, to put up on our NAFA Community Voices blog with um, some of the resources that we talked about today. And in the comments of this YouTube video, we'll uh, we'll link to that. any um anything anna while we're waiting to see if there's a final question from the group um did you have any other products with you that we didn't get to yet so this isn't a product but i do want to share it it's one of my favorites it blows people's minds okay so it's just how you wear your swim bottoms but i found i have a lot of friends we all have different bodies and I, my mind was blown so i'm a ass and belly person i have both abundantly However, there's a lot of folks who are more belly than butt. Did you know that if you simply switch your suit, your suit bottoms around, you'll get more belly coverage and the suit will fit better? I mean, isn't that so fabulous? I cannot wait to try that one, actually. <laughs> and it works with underwear. It's anything where you're like, you. if you notice you just have a lot of cheeky room and and you feel tight in your belly area just switch switch it it's just such a great example too of just like trying a different thing to see how it works like it never occurred to me to try that with swimsuit bottoms but one of the dresses i have that fits me the best um is is a dress that i wear backwards all the time um and i happened to be trying it on at a fat community event and other people were like i accidentally tried it on backwards and people were like that's it girl and so like but it's but i didn't extrapolate that to other things and so part of the lesson here is you know as you're what you know what works in one scenario sometimes works in another scenario right if which hazel works under your arms maybe it works under your belly if you know totally coconut oil works in your butt crack maybe it also works between your boobs or whatever like whatever the things are right that we can um just get creative about how we use the things that we're already using that already work um and then you know continuing to to share (laughs) um to, to continuing to share um is there um What about, do you have anything to say about um, menstrual product situations? No, I'm, it's so annoying. (laughs) I'm working on, I just purchased it. They haven't launched it yet, but it's a Diva Cup with an applicator. And I think that will be more helpful. Um, Because that's my biggest issue with a a Diva Cup type product is you can get it up there, but it's usually either or it's either hard to get up or hard to get out or both. And so that's also would change with the access to the space in the toilet stall. Right. If I can't spread in the appropriate amount I need to spread, I can't get that thing out. Um, I don't think tampons are awesome and I don't think pads are the solution I've recently learned about these discs so I'm kind of trying things out uh feel free to dm me if you found like a a great solution I'd love to try it and share about it so that one is 
a constant work in progress. I have good feelings about the the cup applicator. So we'll stay tuned like for your range. review of that. <laughs> stay tuned for when they ship it. <laughs> Um, okay, so we, we do need to wrap up and I would just want to ask you what we always end with, which is, is there anything we didn't ask you about today that you really, um, wish we had asked you or just really want to leave people with? I don't think you didn't ask me anything, but I just want to remind all of you that, you know, this is a thriving community that we're part of and you are ingenious in the ways that you figured out how to maneuver this world and the more you can share with your fat people and friends and the better off we all are so if there's even one ounce of you that feels less shame about talking about poop or talking about your butthole or something like I'm so happy and I'm really proud of you because I think the more we can talk about this the more um we can free ourselves because everybody does it so I just, I hope that you know how brilliant and dope you are. And that's what I want to leave everyone with. Yeah. And on that note, I will end with um, this comment from the chat, which just says, I just want to say how incredibly soul healing this all is. It feels so good to be present in this community and sharing all this help. Um, Anna, thank you for galvanizing us around these issues. I know, you know, like we talked about before, you really want to be sort of the the messenger of crowdsourced information and not uh, the gatekeeper of information. But thank you for giving us a reason to get together today and talk about some of these things and we will continue to talk about them. Please remind folks where they can find you online so that they can see more of your existing self-care tips and um, and ones to come. Yes, absolutely. So you can find me at on Instagram at I am Anna Chapman. You can find me on a uh, line at I am Anna Chapman dot com. Uh, if you want to contribute to my work and this uh, ever growing community, you can Venmo me, and that is uh, at Anna Louise Dash Chapman. Uh, and that all of the you know funds you give gets put back into this work. So yeah, any way you want to connect with me is great. And feel free to if you don't follow me, follow me and and DM me if you have things that you're like, I want to share this tip because there's never a tip that I'm not excited to hear about, even if it's something I already know, because everybody does everything in their own unique way. And I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much. Um, we want to thank once again, our interpreters from pro bono ASL today's interpreters were Selena and lavender. And, uh, we want to thank you all for being here with us today. Our next NAFA webinar features Brittany ransom, who, uh, is the co-host of the podcast when killers get caught. So those of you who are true crime fans, you want to tune in and, um, register for next, next, next Thursday's webinar and, uh, find out from Brittany, um, how true crime obsession is impacted by being a fat victim, a fat criminal, or a fat um, uh, a law enforcement professional trying to seek these folks down, um, and what it's like to be a fat podcaster talking about these things. So that will be with Brittany Ransom this Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And next week, we'll also be talking to political cartoonist Bruce Deutsch. Um, so uh, you can visit our website for more details on those upcoming events and other programming from NAFA. And, uh, and we uh, we just like to remind everybody that we offer these webinars free to fat community and fat positive folks. And we are able to do that through the generous support of sponsors, um, contributors from all over the world. If you would like to give to NAFA to help us with the production of these webinars and our other pro important programming, please visit nafa.org slash give and donate whatever you can today. We appreciate anything that you can offer in terms of support. Happy Fat Liberation Month, everybody. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.